All right, so good morning. We are starting with uh, fixed income. First reading is uh, fixed income portfolio management part one. Now, fixed income is a core part of uh, CF level three, and maybe also uh, the most enjoyable part because we get to do some reasonable level of uh, number crunching in this. However, it draws uh, very, very heavily from uh, CFA level one and CFA level two. So it assumes that you remember all the concepts that you did at L one and L two, which uh, I am assuming that you do not remember. So I have a ten pointer list uh, from CFA level one and CFA level two. So we will spend about uh, hundred odd minutes in working on our basics. We will revise all the all, uh, important concepts, and then we will start with the first learning outcome. All right, so let's uh, let's start. Concept number one is valuation of a annual coupon bond. Face value one thousand. I mean, I I know you know this, but just to get ourselves started, coupon rate ten percent, maturity five years, YTM fifteen percent. Can you please value this bond? How much? Are you sure? <laughs> that's that's not possible. A thirty-two, yeah. So your item is more; it is a discount bond. I wouldn't tell your name anyone to Sagar, anyone Sagar. So face value is future value in your calculator would be one thousand. Payment would be one hundred. N would be five. I Y would be fifteen, and then you would say compute. present value should we go ahead concept number 2 valuation of a semi annual coupon bond so let us say face value 1000 coupon rate 13% but this time semi annual coupon maturity 6 years ytm 18% 8 21 how much will be all right so how how do you do it is you would say future value on your calculator 1000 payment would be 65 n would be 12 iy would be 9 and then you will say compute present value how much 821 How many of you getting this? Okay. Question number three. Face value one thousand. Coupon rate fifteen percent per annum annual coupon. Maturity. Maturity five years. Spot rates. One, two, three, four, and five. Spot rate of year one, ten percent. Year two, I'm intentionally keeping the gaps larger. Fifteen percent, seventeen percent, and twenty percent. Find out value of the bond. All right. So how do you do it? You will have five cash flows in this bond. One fifty, one fifty, one fifty, one fifty, one one five zero. First cash flow is to be discounted using first year's spot rate, so that would be one point one. Plus, second one would be one point one two raised to two. Plus one point one five raised to three. Plus one point one seven raised to four. Plus one point two raised to five equal to. All right, please please do it on your calculator with me. One fifty divided by one fifty divided by one point one equal to STO one. One fifty divided by one point one two x square. One fifty divided by one point one two x square equal to STO two. 150 divided by bracket open bracket open 
वन पॉइंट वन फाइव वायर एस टू एक्स थ्री ब्रैकेट क्लोज इक्वल टू एस टी ओ थ्री देन वन फिफ्टी डिवाइडेड बाय वन फिफ्टी डिवाइडेड बाय वन पॉइंट वन सेवन एक्स स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर ट्वाइस एक्स स्क्वायर एक्स स्क्वायर ट्वाइस इक्वल टू एस टी ओ फोर एंड फाइनली वन वन फाइव जीरो डिवाइडेड बाय ब्रैकेट ओपन वन पॉइंट टू वायर एस टू एक्स फाइव ब्रैकेट क्लोज इक्वल टू हाउ मच वुड दैट बी एट नाइन्टी सिक्स अभी टू वेदर Now, can you also calculate? Can you also calculate a YTM for this bond? So, tell me how much is the YTM? Eighteen point three two. YTM would be eighteen point three two percent. Now, how do you calculate that? In case if you are struggling, second clear TVM. Eight ninety six negative would be present value. 896 negative would be present value 150 payment 1000 1000 future value 5 is n compute iy is it 18.32 3 yeah. 5 yeah with some decimals now this 18.3 what is how do you interpret this That instead of using five separate rates, if you just discount every cash flow with eighteen point three, then it will just do the job for you. So one point one eight three raised to two, one point one eight three raised to three, and one point one eight raised to five. So if you just discount all the cash flows with this YTM, it will still get you the same present value. That means that YTM is a proxy for all five separate spot rates. Are we together? Now, in the same context, we learned we learned the concept of stripping, bond stripping, where we discuss that you can buy a treasury bond and then you can strip that into multiple zero coupon bonds. Do you remember that concept? You can buy a treasury bond, you can strip that into multiple zero coupon bond. So this first value here. whatever that present value is you can convert that into a one year zero coupon bond with a face value of 150 are we in agreement and then this would be a four year zero coupon bond with a face value of 150 so that whichever investor puts money into that he will get to earn a four year spot rate right and then we made a very important statement at cfl level 1 that a coupon bond is essentially a portfolio of zero coupon bonds are we together on this a coupon bond is nothing but a portfolio of multiple zero coupon bonds should we go ahead now do you want to ask any questions here radhika okay next concept prince let's say we have we have spot rates again I'll just give four years this time. First year is ten percent, then second fifteen, third is twenty, fourth is twenty-five. Can you calculate one year forward rate? One year forward rate, one year from now. Then one year forward rate, two year from now. Then one year forward rate. Three years from now, calculate forward rates. Yeah, use use a precise method. No shortcuts. Forty-one, for just forty-one. Forty-one point two eight percent. Okay. In case if you're wondering how are these calculated, the first one would be calculated as one point one five raised to two divided by. 1.1 minus 1. The second one is calculated as 1.2 raised to 3 divided by 1.15 raised to 2 minus 1. And the last one is calculated as 1.25 raised to 4 divided by 1.2 raised to 3 minus 1. Are 
Are we together on this? Now, how do you use these rates? So let us say we have a bond. Let's say face value 1000. Coupon rate 10%. And maturity 4 years. Please try to value this bond using the spot rates. See if you can value the bonds using the spot rates the way we already did. Just give it a shot. 674. So now the value of your bond using the spot rate mechanism is coming out to be 674. Fine, 675. Alternatively, assuming that you have finished this, alternatively, instead of saying 1.25 raised to 4, you could have used all the forward rates. So here you can replace 1.25 raised to 4 with, so this would be 1.1 into 1.2022 into 1.3066 into 1.4128 this would be calculated as 1.1 into 1.2022 into 1.3066 this would be calculated as 1.1 into 1.2022 and this would simply be 1.1 Right, so this is how you can value the bond using either the spot rates or forward rates. Are we together on this? Should we go ahead? Okay. Then the fourth concept is fourth concept is duration. So as we have learned earlier, duration is essentially the measure of measure of interest rate risk of a bond and it will give you change in value of a bond for given change in yield or interest rate so let us say face value is 1000 coupon 10 percent ytm 10 percent maturity 20 years can you calculate a modified duration for this bond Do you remember modified duration? Yeah, just, just give it a shot, see if you can do it. Modified duration. How much? 0.85 is too low. Maturity is 20 years. 1 point? 1 point 1.7. You have two, three answers. Is it? All right, let's, let's do it together. First, let's get, get hold of the concept. Then we will go on to the formula. At 10%, do you agree that valuation of the bond would be 1000? Yes, because it would be a bond issued at par. So let's put this into your calculator. Second clear TVM. Second clear TVM. 1000 future value. 100 payment. 10 IY. 10 IY. 20N. Compute present value. Is it giving you 1000? Make, make this number positive using plus minus button and put this into your second memory slot STO2. Put this into your second memory slot. Have you done that? Now, say 9 is IY, compute present value. 9 is IY, compute present value. How much is this? 1091. Make this number positive, put this into first memory slot. Now make 11 as IY, 11 as IY, 920, okay, 920, make the number positive, put this in the third memory slot. Now intuitively without doing any calculation, can you observe that your yield, when the yield changed by 1%, bond price decreased by about 8% and when the yield changed 1% here, bond price increase roughly by 9 point will it be 9.1 percent. Uh, are we in agreement here so approximately we can take an average of these and that average would be 8.5 
and what that 8.5 will tell us is that when the yield will change by 1% on an average the bond price will change by 8.5% so the formula that we learned at level 1 we said v minus minus v plus divided by 2 into v0 into delta y percentage in your calculator we have already put them into memory slots so it would be rcl1 minus rcl3 divided by 2 into rcl2 into 1 percentage equal to and is it coming out to be 8.5 8.54 so this 8.54 would be considered as a modified duration of this particular bond which is essentially a measure of interest rate risk are we in agreement here do you want to go ahead now using this modified duration do you think you can calculate Macaulay's duration tell me how much Macaulay's duration so Macaulay's duration you can calculate by multiplying modified duration please with 1 plus y that means multiply 8.54 into 1.1 9.3 so my college duration here would be 9 point effective if you effective if you also capture the optionality in the bond where you assume that uh, a change in the yield on different side will have different impact so we call that as effective duration are we together on this now very important for CFA level 3 exams do you remember that duration works or assumes only tell me the word duration assumes that there would be a there would be a parallel shift of course it captures the linearity but it assumes that there would be a parallel shift in the yield curve that means the yield for all the maturity should change by the same direction and same magnitude are we together on this now if I have to put this on the graph don't clear your memory slots if I have to put this on a graph the true relationship between yield and bond prices so let me put bond price here let me put yield here the true relationship as we know is convex towards the origin what duration essentially does is it captures the linear relationship between the two so it tells us one percent change will change the bond price that convexity of the bond or that curvature of the bond can be captured by convexity the formula for convexity which is essentially the second derivative is v minus plus v plus minus 2v0 divided by v0 into delta y percentage square so let's let's do it together for this particular bond rcl1 rcl1 plus rcl3 minus bracket open minus bracket open 2 into rcl2 bracket close equal to divided by rcl2 divided by 1 percentage x square equal to do you want me to help you with this again so then using duration and convexity what was the formula that we saw which will give us the price impact percentage delta p is equal to minus duration into delta y plus half into convexity into delta y square right so this will tell us that when the yield changes by what amount the bond price is going to change now if you observe the second term will always be positive correct so when the first term is negative when the first term is negative and first term will become negative if delta y is positive then it will reduce that negative impact and when the first term is positive then it will increase that positive impact and therefore we use the sentence we said convexity is the 
friend of bond holder it will always help the bond holder when the price increases it will increase more when the price decreases it will decrease less next concept was p v b p price value of a basis point so for example you have let's say face value 1000 going back to the same example coupon 10% YTM 10% and let's say maturity 20 years. If you want to know what is PVBP, you would want to make your YTM as 9.99 and also make it as 10.01 and then find out by how much bond price increases by how much it dec decreases and then just take an average of these two. Are we together on this? So we will save time. You don't have to do it. But what PVBP really tells you is that when the yield changes by one basis point by how much bond price will change should we move on next concept uh, that we saw at cf level 2 was key rate duration dv0 dv0 is for one basis point dollar value for 0 1 percent so dv01 and pvvp same yeah do you remember key rate durations yeah, if you if you have a bond and let's say the maturity of the bond is 20 years and you have a duration of this bond duration is given as let us say 9. What this duration means is that when the yield will change by 1% across all maturities. That means it is assuming a parallel shift. So when the yield changes by 1% across all maturities, bond price will change by 9%. But then we know in real world scenario, it is very unlikely that yield will change by same magnitude for all the maturities. So what key rate duration will tell you is the sensitivity of your bond price to the change in yield for a particular maturity, right? So you can have certain important key rates. For example, you can have two, 7 let's say 10 and 15 let's say these are your defined key rates let us say your key rate for year 2 is 1.5 key rate for year 7 is 5 year 10 is 6 and year 12, 15 is 12 and then how do you read this is oh, this is too high though 0.15 uh, one point two let us say 1.7 and 9 6.3 and how do you read this number that when the yield for year 10 changes by 1% keeping everything else constant only the year 10 yield is changing then the value of entire bond will change by 1.7% are we together on this if yield for year 2 changes keeping everything else constant then value of the bond will change by uh, generally not generally not you would you will understand how these key rate durations are calculated so if you have a portfolio of bond yes then year two might have uh, especially if you have a bubble portfolio right you have a large chunk at the beginning large chunk at the end then you will have a high key rate duration at year two but otherwise generally you would not have significant K krds at the beginning depends on composition of your portfolio yes in case of single bond the key rates would be highest uh, towards the face value that is last cash flow okay so last two concepts concept number nine is understanding spreads so we did a g spread those of you who did level one before 2014 this was also called in your syllabus as nominal spread. Then there was also I spread. Then there was also a Z spread. And there was also an option adjusted spread. Can you tell me what is uh, the G spread? Correct. So you would say YTM on a particular risky bond minus YTM on a treasury bond just the difference between just the difference between two YTMs that would be referred to as 
the J spread or nominal spread. I spread, correct. Here the benchmark that is used instead of using treasury bonds, we use swap rate, which is essentially again interpolated using LIBOR. Then Z spread. Correct. So if you have a treasury spot rate curve, let's say you have spot rate of uh, year 1, 2, 3, 15, 17, 19. Then what is that rate which should be added along the treasury spot rate curve to make present value of a risky cash flow equal to its market price? We call this as Z spread or Z spread. Remember this? And then the last one is option adjusted spread. Correct. So if you have uh, if you have a callable bond, then that Z spread that you are earning, you are earning that for having taken three risk: credit risk, liquidity risk, and option risk. credit risk, liquidity risk and option risk. So let's say your Z spread is 6%. Maybe because the bond is callable, you're earning 2% here. And for taking these two risk, you're earning 4%. So this 4% here would be considered as option adjusted spread. So the way we can define formula, we can say Z spread minus option cost for a callable bond is equal to option adjusted spread. Are we good? And then the last concept, bond immunization. Remember it? Let us say you have a bond, face value 1000, coupon rate 10%, maturity 20 years, YTM 10%. So if you purchase the bond, and listen to my question carefully. If you purchase the bond, are you assured that uh, you will get to earn 10 percent yield on your investment? Correct. So your returns are also a function of what is the reinvestment rate? Correct. So let us say that uh, you invest into this bond and right before the first coupon date, right before the first coupon date, now the YTM in the market has become 15%. YTM in the market has become 15%. So what do you think your realized earning will they be higher or lesser? Yes. So right before the first coupon date, the YTM has changed to 15. Correct. So your realized earning, will that be higher or lower? Realized earning in percentage. Correct. Your earnings would be higher. That depends on the answer to this question depends on what is your holding period. So let us say this is time zero. Let us say this is year 20. Let's say your holding period was 20 years. Let us calculate a realized yield. Okay. How do we calculate realized yield? We have to find out all the cash flows. So we will have 1000 here, which is a face value. Plus we will have coupon plus reinvestment income. Are we in agreement? Mm -hmm. Let's calculate that. Second clear TVM. Second clear TVM. 100 payment. 100 payment. 20N. 15 IY, because that's the reinvestment rate. 15 IY compute future value 10,244. <coughs> so by the end of year 20, the total cash flows that you'll have is 11,244. Are we in agreement? And at what price did you purchase the bond? 1000 because it must have been issued at face value. So now we can calculate what is your true realized yield. So second clear TVM. 1000 negative, 
thousand negative because you invested thousand, so thousand negative present value. One one two four four. One one two four four future value. Twenty n compute i y. Twelve point eight six. So your realized yield here is twelve point eight six, which we can clearly see is more than the original YTM of ten percent. And we are having a benefit because we get to we got to reinvest the coupon at the rate of fifteen percent. Because reinvestment rate is nothing but interest rate in the market, and interest rate in the market is YTM. So when you purchase the bond, YTM of your bond was ten, then the YTM changes every day. fine now what if your holding period was not 20 years what if your holding period was only 3 years then how do you calculate realized yield so step number 1 we'll have to find out market price of the bond on that day correct market price of the bond because we are selling the bond in between so second clear tvm second clear tvm 1000 1000 future value 1000 future value 100 payment 17 n because there are 17 cash flows remaining 17 n but what should be i y now 15 because the rate in the market has changed so 15 i y compute present value so market price of this bond today is 697 plus you will get coupon plus reinvestment You will get three such payment. So second clear TVM, hundred payment, fifteen IY, three N, three N, compute future value, three forty seven. So those three coupons that you reinvested, they became three forty seven. Can you give me a total of these? One zero. Four four. So now we can calculate the realized yield. We invested thousand in three years. It became one zero four four. So second clear TVM. Second clear TVM. Thousand negative. Thousand negative present value. One zero four four future value. Three S N. Compute I Y. One point four four. Is it substantially lesser than the original YTM of ten percent? So, what is it that we can do so that we can immunize this bond against the change in the yield? So, typically, because here. the benefit of reinvestment is substantially offsetted by the price risk the bond price fell down significantly whereas in that side towards the end you did not have any price risk because you received 1000 you had the benefit of coupon reinvestment so there are two risk on this continuum one is a price risk that when the ytm increases bond price decreases second is a reinvestment risk that when the ytm decreases you get to reinvest at a lower rate so what is that point at which both price risk and reinvestment risk will set off each other right so we saw that that point could be approximated by macaulay's duration though at level 3 they use slightly different convention but you can approximate that point by macaulay's duration So, if you keep your holding period equal to the Macaulay's duration, then both price risk and reinvestment risk will offset each other. So, your realized deal will be closer to ten percent. So, if your holding period is less than that, on the left of this continuum, you are exposed to price risk. And if your holding period is more than this, then on the right hand side of the Macaulay's duration, you are exposed to reinvestment risk. All right, so we are uh, through with ten points. Let's run through them quickly. Point number one: We learned uh, how to value annual coupon bond, which I am sure you are comfortable with. Then how to value a semi-annual coupon bond. 
then how to value a bond using spot rate so discount respective cash flow with respective spot rate also that a coupon bond is essentially a portfolio of zero coupon bond which we call as coupon and principal strips then how to calculate forward rates and how to value a bond using series of forward rates then how to calculate duration do you remember the formula v minus minus v plus divided by 2 into v0 into delta y and macaulay's duration is equal to modified duration into 1 plus 1 plus yt then convexity convexity captures the curvature effect v minus plus v plus minus 2 v0 divided by v0 into delta y square then pvbp change in the value of bond for change in one basis point in the yield key rate duration key rate duration captures the shaping risk so it will tell you that if a yield of only one maturity changes keeping everything else constant what impact will that have on value of the bond then we looked at different spreads nominal spread g spread which is also called g spread i spread z spreads and os and finally bond immunization so the whole idea of immunization is that keep a holding period close to the duration so that reinvestment risk and price risk will offset each other are we good here